In front of me is the aftermath of our Nintendo Switch teardown. We're currently down to the screen. That's something I'm, I'm trying to figure that out, how to get the screen off and separated. Might do that later, but today we are tearing down what remains. That'll be the dock and the Joy-Cons, which uh, I don't know really that I expect to find a whole lot in here that's useful to me, but maybe to some controller modders out there we can, we can find something that's helpful in the future. We're going to start with the dock though, see if there's anything interesting in here. I know it's got a bit more going on than just a charging setup and a charging pass-through, but before getting to that, this content is brought to you by iFixit.com. We're going to be using iFixit tools for this teardown, including the ProTech toolkit that we use all the time for our GPU teardowns. You can use code GAMERSNEXUS at their website for a $5 off coupon. So starting with the dock, this one looks pretty simple compared to the Switch itself, which it wasn't necessarily hard, it's just a hell of a lot of ribbon cables and small screws, a lot more than really seemed necessary. Uh, and I've still got it on the magnetic mat in front of me. So this one is all Y screws, they're all those tri-win screws. It looks like, just for notation purposes, that there are uh, four of the Y or the tri-win screws there, one on the bottom left from that orientation, one center, top right, bottom right. And I believe that's all for what we can see so far. So uh, let's start with those, that should be pretty straightforward. That's straightforward. So that comes off, and then is there anything left? Not really. Back to the Phillips heads. It seems like their trend is generally speaking to do the Phillips are silver and the Y ones are generally black. So that gives us USB 2. There's USB 2 there. We're connected here for USB 2. And what did those screws I just undid do? Ah, bunch of screws down these holes. They're hard, to, they're hidden. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see those. Do you have the right angle? Okay. So we got those separated. That's starting to let this pull apart, it looks like. Uh, yeah, one more screw, okay. So we've got power, power is disconnected. <clears throat> and this little module <laughs> is uh, what goes in here for your USB 2 and one USB 3 port, which I believe is, what is the plan? Was this supposed to be used later or something? So there's your 3.0, conserve of course is 2.0, type C and HDMI connector all on this side and that's the side that faces internally, externally to USB 2, power cable, and uh, I'm guessing like a data ribbon or something. And what else is on here? So this center module right there, notes are 32P048, top line, CRA, second line, GH27D93, third line, and CHN638 for the fourth line. Yeah, so it's an ST microcontroller. It's um, not 100% positive, but I believe it's some ARM-based controller. Uh, so that's the centerpiece. And then what else do we have? VLI, what are they making on here? VLI is making the VL210-Q4 data sheet usb 3.0 hub micro control or controller rather supports rapid charging over usb enables devices charging of devices at rates in excess of baseline usb standards the current limit of usb 2.0 this is when it was written of course is 500 milliamps for configured devices and the current limit of usb 3.0 is 900 milliamps so that's your limited current and they are saying Depending on device, rapid charging implements typical, typically feature current limits between 1,000 milliamps to 2,000 milliamps. Supports simultaneous super speed, high speed, and full speed traffic and low speed traffic. Uh, four downstream ports, one upstream port, in-house USB advanced CMOS for low power consumption. So there's a lot of data out there on that. 
uh, on that USB controller. So we've got our ST microelectronics controller processor or MCU, a VLI USB controller. And on the top side, I don't know if there's anything really of note. So now we've got another. There's one more Phillips here, and then two more down these uh, that hole and down that hole. So we're going to start with this one because it's accessible. Oh, one more. One more hidden under the ribbon. So there's three over here and three over here. Cool. All right, so those go together like that. Spring mechanism. Charging electronics for the USB pass through to charge the device with another spring down here in the very base. So I think the springs kind of looking at this is just to push this thing out of the way so that they, the two ports can mate, obviously. Um, what else is going on? I think that might, really might be it. This looks like it covers everything. Oh, this thing's for the LED if you're wondering what that cable's for. So there's an LED there, charging LED. Uh, plugs into the PCB. And then this PCB that's in here for the uh, connection to the switch is connected via this ribbon cable to the, uh, the, micro, the ST microelectronics and the uh, VLI board for everything else. So I think that covers this thing. I'm not really sure there's much else we can do here. Let's stick this to the side and start working on one of the controllers. So I think we want the red controller because this is the one with the uh, IR camera in it. It's got a bit more going on. So we're gonna take that apart. The controller is held together by a bunch of Y screws. Again, four of them. Where are the Y screws? This one I use, I think. That was trivial. <laughs> All right, there's our battery. What does that say? It's got pencil on it. A-Z-Z-L. Is this the left controller? This is the right controller, right? Uh, let's get lower down than that. There's the battery. There's the battery. No, that wasn't the battery. That was, that was the IR camera. This is the battery. Okay. Remove the tone, plug the batteries, you pull up. Uh, okay, so, okay, this is gonna be not great to put back together because of the springs. <laughs> Maybe that, that looks like the NFC potentially, is that what that is? I'm not super familiar with NFC to be honest because it's in the mobile world and we don't work with those devices, but my uh, assumption would be that's what this is. If someone knows, feel free to comment, but I, I would, that would be my guess, which that's right there. And so that would be around here on the controller. Top of the analog stick. That's, yeah, that's right here. So, okay. What else? We got the battery. What is the battery? Just for people who want to replace later, the battery is HAC006 and uh, HAC-A-BPJMX-CO. And then it is a, uh, 3.7 volt, 25 milliamp hour, 1.9 watt hour battery. And I think that that's probably everything everyone needs to know. Okay, so we got the battery and all this stuff. The only IC, on, oh, it's Broadcom. So that's, Broadcom makes all the wireless tech, generally, wireless and NFC stuff. So uh, it's a Broadcom chip, it is, uh, BCM 20734UAI, and then second line KFFB3G, third line UK163, either 0 or D, P11, and last line 624523T2. So that's that one for anyone who cares to look it up. NFC DEA next to it. So that's right there, that's that chip. Blue cable goes into the closest connector. 
Okay. So there's your analog stick. There's your uh, padding for the buttons right there. It gives you that squish when you push them. There's the underside sensors. And that's what you're actually actually pushing when it depresses. So that's what gets pushed for your four buttons. And then there's another button up there, another button right there. So there's your switches. Now how long those last, I don't know. They're not labeled or anything, so I have no idea. Well, I think that's everything for this controller. Can't get any more torn down than that. IR is right there. And we've already taken everything else apart. HD rumble, huh? I mean, I'd have to think it, whatever it is is in there. But that seems like it's just probably a controller for this analog stick. Definitely nothing under the battery. That's gonna suck to put back together. I'm not sure uh, where the HD rumble comes from. Okay, so I think I think that's about as far as we can get here. Uh, I'm not sure where how the whole HD Rumble thing works. I haven't read any documentation or anything like that or seen anything beyond their video where they're doing the ice cubes comparison. <laughs> um, so I, I'm not positive where that originates. Maybe someone in the comments has a better idea. I don't, again, I don't work with these types of devices. I don't work with phones. Uh, we're just taking it apart. So um, if you can feel it on the top, middle, and bottom, on this controller, I would have to guess there's something going on here or here, but I don't know exactly uh, exactly how that works. Oh, there goes all the buttons. I had to get a screw out of there, so I dumped everything out instead. <laughs> yeah, this is not going to be fun to put back together. I wouldn't recommend it unless you need to replace the battery or something. If you're replacing the battery, that's not too hard. It's the first thing that is exposed, and I would imagine at some point there will be those batteries on sale uh on ebay or something probably straight from the factory with with no branding on them so you might be able to use or service the battery if you want to in the future because of course lithium ion batteries don't last forever they do start to reduce as you burn through charge cycles they reduce their battery life and their endurance uh, but that is the joy con the uh, right joy con and the dock and then we previously tore down the switch itself and now i need to put it all back together uh, but that's probably not going to happen because we're working on the 1080 Ti and a couple more Ryzen SKUs. So thank you for watching. As always, hit the Patreon link in the postal video or go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out with this coverage. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.